Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV on this Thursday. It is me, it is Neil Jones in the studio with me for some hot transfer <laughs> insight, which is basically, I think, what we've got you in to turn into bad news, Jones. Someone's got to fill Pierce's shoes, yeah, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. His, his loafers have got to be filled. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got plenty of bits and pieces to, to talk about. Obviously, you guys watching at home, uh, please do feel free to get your questions in. If there's anything you really want to pick Neil's brain on, then do so in the comments, and we'll get through some of them later on in the show. Um, but let's go through some of the some of the big ones that have been kind of getting rumoured this week and see how many of them we, how many holes we can put in them. <laughs> um, get me gone out on, sir. Before we do, actually, I wanted to, I wanted to, actually wanted to have on a couple of things. Obviously, Ibrahim... Uh, Canate did a reveal for his squad. Yeah, he's yeah. a keen lad. I like he? it. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I think he's going to be really popular with Liverpool. I, like, I've, I was actually saying that to someone this morning. I said he just feels like he's the right fit already. And I, I know we'll wait and see what he's like when he when he steps onto a pitch and things. But like, yeah, he's done. You know, he just he's got a bit of personality about him. He's obviously got you know working class and well, very working class roots in 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 France in Paris. And yeah, he um, he seems like someone who's going to. Do everything he can to seize this opportunity to play for Liverpool. It it's funny, isn't it? Because sorry, just yeah, to, to yeah. crack on. I mean, we're going to talk about transfer rumours, and there's a lot of excitement. He was signed so early; it's almost like you know he's not allowed to count. Is he? You know, yeah. he's forgotten, and you know, could be. Well, not if you're um, what's his face Palmer from the Kevin Palmer, as it who decided oh, right. that like uh, yeah, you know. Clubs can get credited for players who they've literally not bought, oh, but right. Liverpool so, yeah. can't be credited for players that they. Yeah, well, have I mean, it's, it's it's just funny how that works, isn't it? Sometimes, it, like you know, if you like, Cater was a bit like that. We like, waited a year for Cater, and now Canate was in the door, nice and early, and could be a really good bit of business. I, uh, for those who haven't seen it, go and check it out. It's all over Twitter at the moment. But the uh, the fact that he, he basically did a squad yeah. number and alpha video, the baby reveal, wasn't it? <laughs> it was like when they do that, the gender, the yeah. baby gender reveal. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be at uh, number five. Way. <laughs> yeah. it was pretty Brilliant though, he's great yeah, with all the flares and all that. But honestly, like you know, he's had that stuff. He's been he's been doing this like the countdown stuff using Dragon Ball Z gifts, and then he's, yeah. he's he's got like the bottles of water with his own face <laughs> on and his kids Liverpool cake <laughs> for his birthday or whatever, and then he's doing shirt shirt announcements and it, it does you know it's it, it's mad to think Liverpool haven't like properly unveiled him yeah, yet. They've yeah, announced yeah. him. We know he's signed. Been there. Yeah, he hasn't been, to, hasn't been, you know, walking around Kirby yet, doing the lean and sort whatever, of... Or whatever, take... Whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. We, don't, we don't even know what the Ke yeah. what the Melwood lean Kirby, replacement yeah, is. Yeah, the Kirby strut or something maybe, you yeah. know, they could have that sort of, that, that Thiago style, how are we, that little... Like um, what's it called? Like a snack bite. Yeah, or, or yeah, yeah. Know, But Liverpool social team is so on. There's no way yeah. they. There's not. There's not like a, a the brain trust that LFC yeah, TV yeah. sat around going, well, "What would be we replace in the Melbourne League?" There'll be some anime going on, I reckon, with with Canate. <laughs> absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, 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 good to get us uh, kicked off. Look, let's um, let's start. We'll start with something that you um, put yourself, Neil. We're going to start with Harvey Barnes. In oh what, yeah, yeah. What was effectively. It felt to me like a throwaway line at the end of an article. Yeah, well, as <laughs> as launched a thousand ships around the internet. <laughs> every, ever every, since. Everything launched a thousand ships. Javier Javier Barnes admired by Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's. I don't think I'm giving away a trade secret there. Listen, it's very hard to to phrase things sometimes, but there's things that you know, there's things that you suspect and there's things that you don't know and I, I can openly admit that there are a lot of things that I don't know about Liverpool but one thing I do know is that when I've spoken to people within Liverpool's staff, within Liverpool's recruitment team, within Liverpool's squad, play it, certain players' names come up and they say, yeah, you know, he's a good player, he's very, very good. Harvey Barnes is certainly one of them. You know, I think I think he um, <laughs> he probably isn't a player that Liverpool are going to try and sign this summer but it's one of them that if you see a link with Harvey Barnes pop up in the future you can know for certain that there's a lot of people including coaching staff and including recruitment staff that, that think he's a very good player so don't um, don't be surprised but um, I like him I think he's a really good player I think, he's, I think him and Vardy last season when they were when they were on song I mean it's no it's probably no coincidence that Leicester's league form tailed off yeah. while him and Madison dropped out of the side um, he's got plays a couple of positions he's got goals in him I think I think he's one of them players as well that'll probably go to another level of goal scoring I imagine he probably feels like he's one of them that's a bit unlucky sometimes where you think oh god he hit that well but it just went wide at a post yeah. and I think he's got other levels but yeah he, he, I watch him and think Liverpool 
Liverpool would, wouldn't be a, a terrible destination for him. It's, uh, not, not now, maybe, but well, maybe it, in the future. It, it, this, this is the thing about what where we're at with transfer rumours at the moment because there are there's a few that definitely seem more legitimate than, yeah. than others. I mean, you know, it, it comes down to who talk. I say who's talking about these things. Yeah. Are you getting it from unverified Twitter sources or are you getting it from legitimate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, you know. So there's clearly always an ongoing list. But some things that we got to your point there, there'll be ones that are clear, like well, the this season ones. Yeah. But it's yeah. hard for us to wrap our heads around the idea yeah. that you could watch a player that you might think he'll be a next, yeah, next summer and, kind of and, transfer. And exactly that. And also, there's there's ones, and this is the hard, probably the hardest bit. You know, you talk about the next summer, but you talk about these. Some of these players are listen. If he goes and he goes, or he gets injured and he's not there, then he's one that we could we could move across to. Um. So, you know, let's look at someone like. Rafina from Leeds, for example. I don't know if he was on the on the. the he's not actually. He's not, but he was in the same. He's in that same article with Harvey Barnes. Yeah. Same applies. Got admirers. Shares an agent with Fabinho. So there's a, there's a little bit of a link there. Deco, the, the former Chelsea player, Barcelona player, but Rafina is probably like one of them that you look at and go, well, yeah, good player, good player. But you're talking 35, 40 million more maybe. And, he's, and where does he play? He plays down the right where Mo Salah plays. Now, if Mo Salah goes. Then you look and you say, well, hang on, you've got X amount. You can maybe buy a striker there and Rafina goes on the right. Mm -hmm. So he suddenly becomes sort of moves up the list. Um, and that's difficult. It's difficult to sort of convey that sometimes because there's it, it, everyone, you know, we've got we've got championship manager there, um, Muggs here, but a lot of people, <laughs> that's, that's, that's their experience. Yeah. You know, that's their experience of it is you have your shortlist and you have your targets and you move there and you put a bid in there and it gets accepted and then you, whatever. It's a little bit more... Difficult to pin it down sometimes, and some and you know sometimes you see it. Like I don't think it's you look at Ben Davis for example as a, a, a great, great, extreme example of how things can just come out of absolutely nowhere because yeah. of circumstance. And you know, it's it's it sounds like a bit of a cop out to say it with a C, but um, that could be the case this summer. That something could happen. You know, you look at a Trent injury, or you look at a, a, an Allison injury, or what, whatever it may be. God forbid not. But that's when that's when things can suddenly suddenly wear into action. No, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's really interesting. Just the point the point Neil makes. Yeah, Chris spent a ludicrous amount of money on champ manager uh, the coasters, <laughs> which uh, yeah. Yeah. I like them. They are really cool. I, I, thought, do, I thought they were like mini discs. When yeah, I came yeah, in, I yeah. yeah. We, I mean, to be fair, we've got that many copies of Chapman 102 in this office. We probably yeah, literally could use them as coasters. Best version, probably. It yeah, is, the, it is yeah. the best version by an absolute mile. Um, just want to say to uh, people watching live, well, Casey Delamere has just joined us, a brand new member. Thank you so much, Casey. You can use the emotes and stuff in the uh, live. Uh, chat alongside as okay, don't forget if you just joined us now if you want to get some questions in for neil i've said a few already but yeah get them in and we'll get to them a little bit later on in the show um okay Saul nigue yeah i'm not, not another one i'm gonna go back to a famous old one but i know for a fact that he's got he's had massive admirers in liverpool and actually was quite close to signing for liverpool um brendan rogers era at liverpool 2014 i think there was a a spell Around the January time, where they were looking to Liverpool, were looking to, to get rid of Lucas Lever, or Lucas Lever was looking to get rid of Liverpool, um, and had he done so, Liverpool would have, would have tried to sign Saul on a loan to buy. I think I might be wrong. I think he was at Atletico, and he ended up going on loan to Real Valladolid. Um, but I know I know that they really like, or at least one or two members of the um, of the scouting team including the guys who covered them quite ex extensively in Spain, really like a sort of com competitive um, element. I think he played centre-back for Valladolid and sort of played that. He's a very, very good player. I'm not sure how much he'd cost this summer. I'm surprised that he that Atletico Madrid would be looking to get rid of him, but I was surprised he wasn't in the Spain squad for the for the Euros. Uh, you know, there was a couple of a couple of things about that Spain squad that, <laughs> that really, and, and the way it was used during yeah. the tournament. Cough, Thiago. <laughs> <laughs> but... but um, yeah, he's an, he's a, he's a, a player. I think that'll have an awful lot of suitors yeah. around Europe. He, he's a, he's was he twenty six? I think he is real top top level player. I think, and you know, I, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't be sort of getting his name on the back of the Liverpool shirt, yeah, but I do know that, that if there was an opportunity and the price was right, I think Liverpool would certainly want to be in that conversation. It's, it's my, because I've got this from Team Talk, who will have it from 12 different sources, saying the club have reached an agreement over a star man with minimum transfer fee set. I suspect that's probably a little bit uh, yeah, over, that over, that might be a little bit overshot. Yeah, yeah. That, is that one of them you've got to ring up and it's two, £2.50 a minute and then you get to the, <laughs> then you get to the story? Yeah. Team Talk and Club Call, yeah. Yeah, but, definitely. But no, I, I, don't, I certainly don't think it's that way advanced but li- listen I, like I can say about Barnes about Rafina, about other players Neuhaus to, to a degree um, a player who's got um, attributes that are admired and you know Opportunity may be the maybe the, the key the key part of that whether whether the price whether the, the deal whether the, the 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 space arrives in the uh, in the transfer window what um you mentioned him to me. Actually, he wasn't even on my on the agenda for this. But Octavio, the the, the Echo yeah. reporting today that there'd been a, there'd been that talk for a while that he was maybe going to be a make weight in like a Gruitch move. Yeah. That apart, and it, I think the last thing I read on it was that they were saying that this Octavio stuff is coming from Octavio's camp. Yeah, like they're tr- they're trying to flag him up yeah. for a Liverpool move. I don't. Well, first first bullets really fired into the uh, into the. the the carcass of a, of a transfer room. Sorry, I don't. I don't think Octavio is a one for Liverpool. Might might be proven wrong in, in the future, but I don't. I don't think that is. I was saying to Chris actually last week on this that you know swap deals are uh, people love a swap deal, and that's again that's a bit of a champ manager um, sort of hangover, isn't it? Yeah. That, you, that that's always happens. It's very rarely that you see a swap deal come off. I think of not many, but Pjanic and Arthur. I think Barcelona, which was a bit of an accountancy swap deal. I think, um, but yeah. Gruwich is one that obviously I think we'll come to talk about or mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll he'll feature heavily I think in this show over the next few weeks just because of the situation but I tell you I'm told it's not one that's that's boiling um, and it wouldn't surprise me I think was a, I think the rumour was that he had a release clause that expired at some point during this June and July um, and that Liverpool would have to act fast well they haven't they yeah. haven't you know that that, that that has passed um, I think it was Abola that said it would be done by the end of a week or it could be done by the end of a few weeks back. It hasn't been and I don't expect it to be. Um, although I did, I did, I won't reveal trade secrets, but I did text Marco Gruwich and ask him what type of player Otavio <laughs> is and his reply was just, good player. So yeah, he's got the Marco Gruwich seal of approval. <laughs> good Good player. Good player. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic player. There we go. Done for us, darling. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, missed a, we've missed a massive trick there. Yeah, as well. yeah, his, his yeah. rating of. Um, yeah. we, um, we, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from Otavio for, for now. <laughs> the, I mean, another one that's kind of, we're seeing all over the place at the moment is Renato Sanchez. I mean, anyone who's had a cursory glance at, uh, yeah. at, at Portugal during the tournament, he's looked really good. Yeah, he yeah. has. And, and, and I think particularly because there's this perceived genie Van Aldem hole in the squad, he looks... He, exactly Wild like the Genie Wan album that yeah, we've done, you yeah. know, picking the ball up, rolling men, strong, you know, that that yeah. kind of stuff. I can I can understand why if you if as our couch sat at home on the couch yeah. scouts are looking at something and thinking, I need to replace Genie Wan yeah, Alden. Yeah, yeah. Ding 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 ding. We did have a super chat come in about this in particular, um, from Devin Fisher saying, Please tell me Renato Sanchez is more than Twitter grumbles. <laughs> Would love for him. Would love him for the future. So we've, you know, I mean, I'm seeing again. I, I, I can't help, but I, I, I get that. You know, you're watching Portugal, you're thinking this guy, this guy's yeah, the business. Yeah. He was so highly rated. He's played. I mean, I was looking at his honours. Like, I mean, and, and how involved he's been yeah, is yeah, up for yeah. question. But he's won the Bundesliga. He's yeah. won the French, French League. league yeah. He's won the, uh, the Euros. He's won the Euros. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously he has played in England as well, yeah. albeit not much and well. well. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, of course. <laughs> yeah. we'll, have, we'll, have, not, we'll have complaints yeah. coming in, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> we'll get that. Yeah, not, not pull up trees at, 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 at Swansea, of course, but um, nonsense? I wouldn't say nonsense, but I don't think... I, I, I think the, the Twitter grumblings, as it was described... Are, are louder than than they need to be on this one. I I think what it would appear with Renato would be would be if it was a cut price deal, and I think if it was a real cheap, not cheap, but you know a sort of a real seen as a, a gamble. I think it will, it will be a gamble. You know, I know it's it's hard to, to sort of to look past that 2016 to 2018, 19 sort of dip that he had. Because well, the first thing anyone ever says, whenever you either go, "Wow, yeah, him," or people go, "It's one crap, it's one." Yeah, yeah, and 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 really didn't work out to buy him for him. Besides, you know, the odd bit. I mean, 
I remember watching him just before them Euros. He played for Benfica in the Champions League. I think it would have been either CSK in Moscow or Zenit St. Petersburg away. It was definitely Russia away for for Benfica. And it was just, I think he was 17, and you're like, what is what is this? And then you see him in the Euros, and you think, wow, what a, what a talent. And when he comes to Swansea, you know, you... I think those Liverpool fans probably were a bit like, hang on, what? why didn't we loan Well, he was exactly with that. Yeah, he was yeah, being what? heavily linked with the loan. Yeah. And all the talk, the chatter at the time was that like, Klopp liked him, but yeah. wasn't going to develop a footballer yeah, for, yeah, for a for European else. Ra- yeah, yeah and, and I, I get that. But I, I do wonder sometimes whether, you know, the sliding door moment that maybe... He he was someone that you can look and go, oh, he flopped at Swansea, but he did. He, he, he you know, there was I think the most famous thing from his time at Swansea was there was a video of him passing the ball to a steward. I think he, he, he like <laughs> he, he tried that. to like ping one. They had to do it in a luminous kit, weren't they? I think he tried to ping one out to a steward, and like that became like a sort of you know a bit like Mo Salah's shot for Chelsea that ends up for a throw in. You know, becomes the act, this sort of um, yeah. the image of his time, but. I wonder whether he would have fared a lot better at a bigger club because it's sort of I feel like he's got that personality of you know he, I think he, the spotlight sort of appeals to him and maybe the spotlight just wasn't as bright in 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 Swansea as it could have been. Um, I don't th- I don't personally think Liverpool will sign him this summer um, unless of course the deal becomes one of those ones that you think you know what it's too good to turn down. Yeah. Um, I've, I've spoken to people at Liverpool who say well really the the, the costs associated with it the the whole, the, the idea that they buy him to not start for, for Liverpool just doesn't doesn't sort of fit, and mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense on on a few levels. Um, I'd like to see him in the Premier League. I'd like to see him at a club like Liverpool because I think he's one of them quite. He's, he's got a bit of uniqueness to him that you, that you think of a midfield and you think, oh, I'd like, I'd really like to see him sort of on song and flying at a, yeah. at a club and, you know, if it was Liverpool, all the better for it. Um, but sadly, I don't think it will be this summer, personally. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting one, certainly, because, again, I mean, I think we've all got one. Everyone's got their, their play that they feel like they've unearthed from watching yeah, the Euros yeah, when, yeah. you know, we just, we just haven't. <laughs> yeah. Like, Granit Xhaka looks amazing, by the yeah, way. That mailer, mailer that left back for uh, Denmark's yeah. my one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's gone to Atalanta, mate, you know, like, just, just get over yourself. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the way I look at it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Played against Liverpool for Genk. I didn't notice him then, put it that way, yeah. I, I mean, how many times, how many yeah. times have done that on this? Oh, we... we I look back, oh, we've played against them. Did that, did that happen? <laughs> yeah, what did he do? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, to be fair, I did that with Thiago. Don't remember. Don't remember Thiago touching the ball in yeah, the uh, by yeah. me. But there you go. Yeah. Um, Proof that I know not. Um, <laughs> right. On, we mentioned unverified Twitter sources earlier. Uh, Rudy Galetti, um, who is apparently, let me just get this, get this confirmed, is an opinion Easter on TV for TV Dallow Sport, um, Sky Sport, apparently. And then something about Chris. I don't know. He hasn't got a tick. Which doesn't mean nothing in the world. Some, 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 some good people haven't got ticks. Some terrible saying, people yeah. have got ticks. Don't yeah. Worry. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> says, despite requests for a doku uh, from many uh, European clubs, first of all, Liverpool, Ren want to keep him. The Belgian is happy in the French club at the moment and does yeah. not want to change teams. Jeremy Doku? Yeah. Well, an easy one to link with Liverpool, given that there's a history, there's a history there that um, Liverpool have looked at him and he's got... Um, a lot of attributes that I, you know, they look, they look Liverpoolish, don't they? He likes to carry the ball, he likes to cut in, he likes to, you know, cause mayhem in the final third. So I think he'd certainly be one to be on Liverpool's radar, young enough and at a club that you'd think, yep, yeah, he's not, you know, he's not gonna, his value isn't gonna get to sort of 100, 150 million at Ren. Yeah. You know, it might be one of those. Um, I think, I think. Liverpool buying a, a forward this summer would depend on what happens with the players at, at the club, and I, and I know that that gets presented as sell to buy, and I, you know it sort of it sort of is in the in the sense, but it's also creates space to buy. You know, yeah. it's it's like well, well, it's both, isn't it? Yeah, you, you know? yeah, you end the, you end the summer with Minamino, Shakiri, and Origi, and a new signing and Harvey Elliott and Oxley Chamberlain, and you're suddenly thinking, well, you know, we've got an awful lot of players on the wage bill there. Um, it's hard to remember a day for people when like, you did with games as a kid, where you had to you had to sell your old games to buy new games yeah. back in the day. Now yeah, you yeah. don't yeah. because they're all you know it doesn't work that way. But you know yeah, you, that's, yeah. That's, and it, it, it's 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 a it's what Liverpool have done and they've done it very successfully. And you know I know it's not because it's getting compared to Sancho going to United and whoever going to Man City and whoever going to Chelsea. Um, and it doesn't compare favourably, but it's what Liverpool have done. It's what Liverpool will continue to do. They will continue to, you know, 
get rid of a Dejan Lovren and bring in a Simakas and balance the books with a Ryan Brewster going out the door and a Ryan Kent going out the door, you know, the little the little three and four million sales that they're going to produce with the likes of Camille Gabara and whoever else, Liam Miller. Um, that all that all plays its part in what Liverpool do with the squad, both in terms of the finances and in terms of the the, the composition of the squad and, yeah. and making sure that you know you're not you're not getting to a stage in September where you say the Premier League squad drops and you've got Jadon Shaqiri on however much money. Well, a week they were very and nearly like that last, yeah. last season. You yeah. know, they, they had they had no choice but to but to shuffle things around yeah, because yeah. We, Liverpool owned too many. Yeah, yeah, you, you look at, at, look at, at Arsenal at that last year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mesut Ozil wasn't yeah. wasn't in the squad, was he? And you look at um, they basically ended up having to loan out two players in Wilson and Gruwich that probably could have played games for them, but there was no space for them in the squad. They wanted to sell them, they couldn't sell them, and they ended up having to just give them. In Gruwich's case, it was quite a good loan deal. In Wilson's, it was by far a perfect loan deal. He was dropping down a division from from the Premier League the previous year, so they they want to avoid those kind of situations. Docu, to go back to the, the player in, in question, I think he's a very, very good player. Furthered his reputation really well in the in the Euros, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if Liverpool were, were sniffing around him at some point in the future, maybe even at some point this summer, depending again on those factors that we've just discussed. Yeah, there's um, there's a few other bits that we're definitely going to be discussing on uh, Transfer Insight Extra over on the RedmanTV.com, which is a couple of the bits that you've mentioned about people moving out, Liam Miller, yeah, Grabara, the stuff about Divock Origi and, and, and a bit more on Gruyich, but obviously people have been sending their questions in. We're going to get to some of them. Cool. Please feel free to get some more in uh, while we're doing this right now. Um, the first is, I mean, I guess it's not so much a question, but I, we'll, we'll chat around it from Helen Raybold, um, saying we have to offload players, Karius, Ox, Wilson, Gruyich, Origi, etc. Kind of been discussing yeah, that already. Yeah. I mean, this is the point. You know, if nothing gets overlooked, Liverpool might have a massive, might have a secret war chest stashed away somewhere. <laughs> they might, they might have, yeah, I know. Um, but when you look at the reality of it, you know, Wilson, they'll be hoping for 15 million yeah, for Wilson, yeah. they'll be hoping for 15 million for Shakiri, they'll be hoping for 15 million for Origi, yeah. and all of a sudden. You know, well, for a start, there's Canate paid for with, with, yeah, with those, yeah. but it doesn't take much. There's a bunch of these players who clearly are surplus to requirements. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's so hard to judge the window at the moment because there are no nobody signed. Anyone. Yeah, it's, it's 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 tough, isn't it? I think there will be a, a a rush once the Euros finishes that you'll you'll start to see the snowball effect and going into August, the thing or end of July, start of August when teams start going back, you will start seeing that. And also, you 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 forget that there's the ripple effect of things like Sancho going to to United and suddenly Dortmund signs someone and suddenly someone else is looking to sign and someone. United are looking to move people on. Yeah, it? exactly. That. So there's there's all that that going on, and then there might be the same happening with City with Kane or with Grealish or those kind of deals so I think there's a lot of movement to come everywhere and even if it's not at Liverpool it could certainly impact Liverpool in the sense of suddenly suddenly a where the Bremen have got some money to spend or suddenly a Porto have got a little bit more in the budget or a Benfica or whoever it may be Rangers you know you could have all these all these kind of um, clubs that have are suddenly thinking do you know what 10 million for Harry Wilson's not a bad deal do you know what yeah, well, let's go and get Nat Phillips and, and 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 bring him in. You know, you look at, let's just say Brighton lose Ben White to to Arsenal. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Nat Phillips becomes out or Tarkovsky goes from Burnley and goes to Leicester or wherever. You know, so there's a lot to come. Um, what do you I think, think on this? Sorry. sorry, what do you think is going to unlock it for Liverpool? Is there one? Is the one player moving on? Um, no, I don't. I think the most saleable assets they've got at the moment, probably Shakiri. You could probably say Nat Phillips is in there, yeah. um, just because of the the the, the, the states. And obviously Origi, you know, Origi is one of those that you can you can roll your eyes and say, oh, 15, 20 million for Divock Origi. He hasn't scored a league goal for however long. But yeah, Rian Brewster, Rian Brewster went for that. Dominic Solanke went for that. Danny Ings went for that after he'd had two serious cruciate injuries. I know he's done really well. You know, you look at other strikers. Ollie Watkins went for that from the, the Championship. There is value there, so you are looking there with none of them scored a Champions League final goal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm pretty sure Origi's scored major tournament goals for Belgium. He scored Champions League, Premier League, Bundesliga, so he's got pedigree. I think it would probably be around hit Origi, Shakiri, Phillips. You're looking at them. You could probably you could make a case for close to fifty million for the three of those in a normal market, and that would obviously that would obviously add an awful lot. And I don't think. 
I don't ever get the impression, and you, you know, the commenters might pull me up, but I don't ever get the impression that Liverpool have sold loads of players and then we're, look, we're looking around saying, well, hang on, where's, where's that gone? It yeah. feels like that just gets reinvested, a bit like Thiago and Jota last year. Yeah. Um, so if, if you do get those three off the books, let's just say, or Minamino instead of one of the, the two forwards, then... I think that would that would open up a few avenues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, F. Cham Al Hassan saying, uh, if you were to give a percentage of how many transfer rumours are proper rumours, and we are <laughs> actually in for the player, what would that be? Oh well, do you know what? I would say if you're talking about published, if you're talking about you know, let's not let's just take the Twitter the Twitter sort of like you say the unverified sources. Let's go that way. Yeah. If you if you take a percentage of of newspaper slash websites slash you know what you call Serious journalism. I mean, mm-hmm. you can you can pick the bones out of that phrase, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and and we all do. I would say there's there's usually something in some pretty much all of them, whether it's a lie. Sometimes it's a lie in the sense of the agent just says, "Oh, Liverpool after my player," you know, like yeah, and it's written. But it, there's something in it in the sense that someone said it, someone's told someone that. I wouldn't say. I think. I wouldn't say it's it's a hundred percent, and there are there are some easy easy rumours that seem to pop up, and you think, hang on, that's a bit obvious, isn't it? it never the amount of times where it's like, you, if you just pop one more club onto the end, yeah, 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 why not? I you, mean, to be honest, I've seen it with with my own. I'm not I'm not, I'm not dissing my own website here, but there's there's often times when it will, there'll be a profile on a young player, and it'll say linked with Chelsea and Liverpool or Manchester United and Liverpool, and I'll think I haven't. Never seen him linked with Liverpool. You know, where was that? And then you can look back and you go, ah, he was. He was linked by you know a website in Belgium or wherever. Or, you know, and you you sort of think mm, that's a bit dubious. So I would I would say it's it's probably eighty percent. If I'm going, I'm plugging a figure out of figure. But I'm saying yeah, yeah, at least eighty yeah. percent will have some sort of substance to it. Whether it's sometimes it's oversold, sometimes it's un, um, overplayed. How serious something is, but there's usually. There'll be something in there. You can usually pull the thread, and you get somewhere that's an agent, or it's a club trying to create a little market, or it's it's you know a, a national team managers just tipped someone off and said, look, I've got a lad there, you know, in the Ghana youth team, and he's he's going, he might go there. You know, there's there's usually some sort of thread to be pulled at. Yeah, well, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. the amount of those where which are generated by. Uh, chairman of Turkish Super League clubs. <laughs> yeah. Domagoj like... Vida was one that I remember never. I remember, I remember like trying to explain to, to our Turkish team at goal saying, "Look, Liverpool aren't signing Domagoj Vida." They're like, "No, but the Besiktas chairman is saying that they are." I was like, "I know. I just you know they're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just, they're not. They're not signing them." And, it, and it, but it's it's funny how that happens, isn't it? You know, there's there's real there's real. I mean, do you know what? You'll you'll know it a little bit yourself. I, I know from just, just the, the tittle-tattle conversations you have with anyone in round football, it'd be a journalist from another country, and they'll just sort of drop in, they'll say, oh, they, they've been looking at him, or, you know, oh, they made a bid for him in January, and you sort of think, did they, you know, all right, okay, yeah, and then you sort of, you can look down it, and not always, sometimes it's the case, sometimes you just get a tip off, and you go, wow, where did that come from? You know, I said Vandenberg was one of those, where you sort of, someone says it, and you go, what? Like, you know, who's this guy? And then you you you... you you do your calls and you do your checks, and it's true. But yeah, there's a lot of a lot of tittle tattle in football within football. I'm not just talking about Twitter. I'm not just talking about you know um, the the ITKs or, or whatever it may be or the, or journalists. There's a well, lot of it's people not who sim- speak. It's not as simple as going and buying buying a product. Yeah. Because there's so many moving parts yeah, to each yeah. and every one of them. You know, you've got you've got to make sure. You know, it's 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 like it's not like you pull out your debit card <laughs> and you go over it and you, you yeah. know what I mean and you and you, and you you know chip and pin it and it's and it's all and it's a so it is a one person transaction. Yeah, there's no yeah. other else involved. Oh more, yeah, and like, that. the more the more stages there are, the more things. And I mean, even daft examples. I know a, 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 a fellow who's an agent. He gets when he goes to see games or whatever. He his tickets come via like a, a Belgian club or whatever you know what right, I mean like so yeah, he's yeah. on the on the, the so yeah. there's probably people who go oh X club yeah I've been looking at such player, and such yeah. and it's like it's not it's just yeah. someone's gone can you get me in this game and someone's gone yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead of course of course and like you know there's a lot of people who um I was gonna say really who they're they're around a lot of. Parts of the game, yeah. so that so a lot of scouts who, who who talk to agents, there are a lot of people who scout for agencies, there are a lot of people. So you know, you, you see, you see um, players' agents speaking sometimes, and you 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 
you think okay and then you speak to someone else in the game and say he's not his agent you know he, he just yeah he's just been doing a bit of work for him in 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 France or whatever you know it's it's there's a lot of I know there's been a lot of problems with that kind of thing the regulation of agents was uh, was taken and bringing back an exam for that which I know a lot of agents have very happy about because it, it brings back some sort of order or they feel it does but there's a lot of times when you you know clubs can be speaking to four different people who say they represent a player and one of them might be saying yeah Liverpool are really keen another one's saying no no he's not going to Liverpool he's going to send it to Germany you know one's saying he's staying where he is he's going to sign a new you know you, you have all these moving parts it's a very murky business and I, I think <laughs> I think sometimes we don't help ourselves as journalists because you know it's it's easy sometimes isn't it to just to just Play, play along with the trick and say, look, yeah, he's he's Man United target or he's a Liverpool target. It's hard to it's hard to sift through it sometimes, but yeah, keep no, trying. Keep trying. So you did. There's nothing to say that the, the solid information you have doesn't it doesn't end yeah. up panning oh, out well, for a variety of reasons. Listen, I've had, you know I've had plenty of. Um, I mean, look, you look look back as far as Nabil Fakir. He he was that close to joining Liverpool. He was he was wearing the shirt, and it still didn't happen. And doesn't mean you're wrong. Doesn't mean you know nothing. Doesn't mean there was nothing in the story. It just means something changed. Yeah. You know, something. Yeah. No, we, no, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely something to be wary of. We, um, Carl Ed, uh, same with the super chat saying, why does Klopp keep faith with Ox and Cater? Now we saw a lot of like rumblings around the Cater, Cater stuff for this summer. Like, if a bid came in, you know, maybe yeah. this is the summer that we moved on. We've not seen anything no, around no. either of them at all so far. No, I, I don't know. I'll stop Cater really because. I think the word from Liverpool is no, no chance you'll, you'll be leaving. But it's it's an interesting situation. Both of them, I think, are getting into. Certainly, Cater is where something's going to have to happen in the next year because he's either going to be into the final year of his contract, or he's going to have to sign a new one, or he's going to have to be sold, pretty much. And I suppose you'd say the first, the first port of call is games, isn't it? And playing and and, and getting some under his belt. He does tend to be, he just tends to be knocking around at the start of seasons. Cater doesn't he? Yeah. I think he started the first few games of last season. Pretty sure he started a few early on in the. Um, well, he definitely started in his debut season. So, I think why he persists with them, Klopp, is because he believes in their ability, and I think he's got there is a a, a, um, a the a skill more, sets that both of them possess yeah. that are very expensive skill yeah, sets. Yes, exactly. To that. And they, you throw Dejan Lovren and Joel Matip into that mix, so. I could make a case, and a lot of people could make a case that, well, yeah, Dejan Lovren was great in the squad, but he was injured so much, and he makes mistakes occasionally. Joel Matip's a great player, but he's injured too much, and you can't bank on him. But yeah, and Klopp's thought was, well, yeah, you could pay £50 million to get someone as good as Dejan Lovren. Whether you believe that's right or not, mm -hmm. that's what Jürgen believed. And he might get injured as well. So then you've got an injured player that you had anyway, and he's not as good as the player that you've got rid of. And he could, you could make the same point about Joel Matip. I think you can make the same point about Cater, certainly, probably Ox as well. I, I, I mean, I have more doubts about Ox than I do about Cater as a as a long term player for Liverpool. Because I just, I don't see many games that he starts in where you think, yeah, that's the right decision. Um, I've said if Ox, if I, and we've had a few players down the years like this. If he was thirty one, you'd be laughing, yeah, because. Yeah. Drop him in here and there yeah, for games. No, if, if you just put him into the Milner yeah. role, yeah. He's playing loads of positions, and you're yeah. thinking, well, he's not going to expect it. But you'd also look at it and go, he, yeah. if he get if he can stay fit for a season, he'd be very good for a, a lot of a lot yeah, of good teams. Yeah. Absolutely that, and he's probably still got enough credit in the bank and and value that you could probably get a good price for him. Um, but that's why Klopp keep, keeps faith with them because he believes in their ability. He's probably a little bit if if you were if you're going down the route of Mourinho. Being at one end of the extreme of sort of cut them off, no, this lo you know loyalty lasts as long as they're useful for me. And Klopp's probably at the other end of that extreme where he is maybe too loyal, if anything. Um, and I think he probably that probably falls into the category of Oxen Cater that he doesn't want to just dismiss them. You look at like Adam Lallana, for example. You know he kept kept him probably longer than he he might have done. I think I think. The builders Lovren would probably be a season longer than than Dejan would have wanted. I think he wanted to leave the summer before. So yeah, there's probably a, there's probably a few players that fall into that category that yeah. that you know he 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 has more faith in them than probably Twitter does. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. The um, the last one we got for now, unless anyone wants to get any more in, Matthew Eckersley saying I'd be sad to see Minamino and Cato leave. Cato leave. They have more potential to offer. Uh, who's excited for the Annie Road expansion? Yeah, the Minamino stuff's another one, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, again, I, I, my my general feeling on it more than ever before. I think 
a lot of the future lies in what happens in pre-season. It'll rely on bids coming in for certain yeah. players, certainly. But I just wonder whether th- there's a couple of examples. I think Harvey Elliott's probably one of these. Yeah. Minamino's one of these. And then the fitness of the centre-halves and all that kind of stuff. It's actually probably the most important pre-season Liverpool have had in quite a while. Yeah, yeah you're right. Especially with you know the, the Copper America and maybe a few players missing most of pre-season. You know, Jordan will probably not be back for, you know, until probably a week before the season starts, maybe. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, it's less of a, a, a strange preseason as well in the sense of you're not going around America and doing your tours and you're playing in these weird champions, international champions cup games and that kind of thing. It's it's a little bit more tight and, and sort of you imagine it'll be. I don't. I wouldn't say there's more training time, but I, I imagine there's 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 less. There's more behind closed doors. Yeah. There's more behind closed yeah. doors um, going on. So yeah, if you can take a step forward, I think Harvey Elliott's a great example. Really, you know, I'm very interested to see what happens with him. Um, you look at probably Reese Williams would be in that category of you know, is Reese Williams is he going to build on what he did last year or is he going to sort of be one of them that you have to go thanks for everything and off he goes to the championship for, and see how you get on there. Nats in that that position. Minamino is definitely one that. I suppose what what are you looking for from him? You're looking for what has he? Does he understand why he was loaned out? Yeah, I think that's probably the, the best way of putting it. Does he understand? Because I I wouldn't have loaned him, mm-hmm. and I was surprised that Liverpool did, but they did, and there was a reason for it. And does he know that? Because he didn't rip it up at Southampton. He didn't do badly, but he didn't rip it up. He didn't go and play every game. Even he didn't score that many goals. Are they? Is he going to come back and just be the same player that, that, that was loaned out? And if so, then it's not going to work for him. Yeah. Or is he going to come back with this sort of desire of, hang on, you know what, right? Something's clicked with me and I, I know what I need to do to be a Liverpool player. And it, you have to say the odds are stacked against them because not many players go out and loan and end up coming back and becoming a, a star for most clubs, really. But certainly for Liverpool in recent years, it hasn't really happened. But you'll get chances, at least in the, in the pre-season, you know, with, with Bobby away and with, you know, Doubts over Rigi and Shakiri and whoever else. Yeah, it's interesting. Again, as you say, what happens? With what if you can't get any, if you can't move any of the players on? You'll you'll like. I don't think they were desperate to move Brewster on last summer. Yeah. But there becomes a point where you do have to make a decision. Yeah. Someone's got to go, yeah. and if no one wants the, the other things that you've got, maybe you'd have to part with something that you. Yeah. You would you prefer to keep yeah. over some over something else, but yeah, definitely interesting one. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, right, we're going to be doing transfer insights extra over on the RedmanTV.com. We're going to be discussing some of the players who have moved out. Um, let's say Liam Miller moving on, uh, and, and the, the, our Liverpool briefing um, about Divock Origi staying at Liverpool and what could that mean and how true that is. So do check that out. That'll be streaming on the RedmanTV.com. Come over and watch that, uh, and don't forget as well, we've got a whole host of amazing extra features over on there, including a full fifty minutes interview with Liverpool. Player Trent Alexander Arnold on our Henderson 10 Years of Red documentary, which is so good. Neil Jones even texted me to say that it was it good. A good player. Good, good yeah. player. Good, good, good player. Good, yeah. good doc, says Neil <laughs> yeah. Jones of Goal.com. Um, yeah, do be sure to check out Neil's uh, stuff over on Goal as well. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back with another transfer insight next week. Ta-da. We're 18 points clear. With like ten games to go, Hendo let us celebrate. He's like, no, we haven't won it. We haven't. It was only until it was. I'll be honest. It was literally the when when Chelsea beat City. That was when he celebrated it. Never even the game when we beat Palace and that. There was no like he wasn't overly celebrating any changes in that. Like some of us were. Like some of us were like yeah, it's done. Uh, one more win, we have like eight games left or something. But this is done, and uh, you, you just celebrate it like a win. Well done. Uh, it's yeah, it's crazy.